Um, yeah, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Max Makes Magic. Um, we got to 10,000 subs. And as part of doing that, I decided that I'd do something fun. Uh, and at the same time, uh, somebody on my Discord uh, pointed out that uh, there was a new post on Reddit, um, and it was the Magic the Gathering Rules Iceberg. Um, and I looked at it and I thought, this this has to be done. This just has to be done. Um, so uh, I got in touch with the the author, um, Siberian Rabbit, um, also known as Fabulous Mare on uh, Reddit. They, yeah, the, <laughs> the, the amount of preparation that's gone into this is pretty crazy. Um, yeah, so if you're not aware of what the uh, rules iceberg is, I will uh, flip over to my sheet and I will demonstrate. Uh, there are uh, a bunch of rulings in various different layers, um, and the red rulings are rulings that currently still exist. And orange rulings are rulings that used to be true at one point back in the 20-some-odd the years of Magic's history, uh, and, and now they're not, for various reasons. And I'm going to be going through each of the 13 layers. This is probably going to be about two hours. Without much further ado, I think I'm going to get started on layer one. Layer one, uh, everything, these are nice things. We the, the, There are things here that are like generally, literally incorrect, but they're very good mnemonics sort of to keep in mind. So layer one, there are seven card types. Uh, there are lands, there are creatures, enchantments, sorceries, instants, artifacts, and planeswalkers. And that's pretty much it. You don't need to know anything else as you're starting out magic. Nice and easy. Untap, upkeep, and draw. Uh, so the, that's the precise ordering of the beginning step. And one of the common misconceptions that some people have in Magic is that you uh, draw before you do an untap. And that's that's just a general mistake. But uh, yeah, Sphinx the Second Sun lists that out explicitly. Artwork has no effect on gameplay. Uh, so this is an actual rule. Uh, occasionally people will just look at cards and go, that card must have flying, it's got wings. Um, so yeah, the, the illustration has got nothing to do with gameplay, um, unless you're playing like Flavor Judge or something like that. But uh, yeah, Sovereigns of Lost are Lara here. They're clouds, clouds, but they don't fly. So, you know, that's that's just how that is. Uh, another one, Lanaror Elves doesn't fetch forest from your deck. Um, so it's just a slight misconception that some people might have uh, when they start playing the game. Um, lands just add mana to your mana pool. That's that's just how it works. And so, do, well, Lanaror Elves also just adds mana to the mana pool. You, you, you don't go and fetch any lands. Summoning Sickness. Yeah, so... Um, pretty much straightforward uh, for everyone who's been playing for a while, but for anyone new, um, activated ability with the tap symbol or the untap symbol uh, can't be activated unless the creature has been under its con controller's control continuously since their most recent turn began. And it can't attack and unless it's been under its controller's control continuously since their most recent turn began. And that's summoning sickness. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward. If you, you've got to control it for a turn, basically, and then you get to do things uh, colourless isn't a colour. So uh, yeah, there are five colours in Magic, um, and colourless is not one of them. Uh, you can't choose colourless if something asks you to choose a colour, and uh, it's, it doesn't interact with uh, colour identity and commander at all. Um, yeah, and there's a couple of uh, comprehensive rules there as well. London Mulligan. Okay, so London Mulligan is the uh, current mulligan that you can take. Um, so that is where you, uh, to get a new hand, you uh, shuffle your cards back into your library, uh, you draw a new hand of cards, and then for each number of times that you uh, have mulliganed, you get to put, you have to put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library. Uh, and you can mulligan down to zero cards. Same, same as old ones, but we'll come on to the old ones a little bit later. Uh, mana weaving. So uh, if you don't want, don't know what mana weaving is, um, it's it's where you you've got the the concept of sticking lands throughout your deck while you're uh, you know while while you're putting it together and, and shuffling your your deck. Um, so yeah, it's illegal. Uh, either you are sufficiently shuffling your deck um, and it shouldn't matter, or you're not insufficiently. So, sorry, you're insufficiently shuffling your deck, um, which means that you're stacking your deck and uh, that's illegal. 
All right, um, you can cast instance whenever you want. Uh, you can cast instance at any time and instance in response to anything. Okay, so that's layer one. Layer one, fairly straightforward stuff. Hopefully um, anyone who has played Magic for any amount of time should know these things. Um, so let's go on to layer two, nice and nice and quick. Uh, layer two, some, uh, some slightly more interesting ones here. Um, so let's get on to them. There are nine card types. Uh, so I, I said there were seven previously. There are there are actually nine for, for this layer. Um, yeah, so we have lands, creatures, enchantments, sorceries, instants, artifacts, planeswalkers. But don't forget, we also have tribal and dungeon. Uh, dungeon is a type of uh, card that is in standard. Um, and uh, to my knowledge, uh, it's, uh, so is tribal. Um, so tribal is, uh, is just one that's associated with creature types as well. So yeah, nine card types for now. Lands are colorless. Uh, so intuitively, you might think that if a text box is red and it makes red mana, that, that card would also be red. However, uh, yes, objects with no colored mana symbols in their mana costs are colorless. So lands are colorless. Um, it's, it, it's obvious to some people who've obviously people who've played, but uh, some some newbies might look at this and go, this card is red. Right, yes, the legend rule. Uh, if a player controls two or more legendary permanents with the same name, that player chooses one of them and the rest are put into their owner's graveyards. And that's the legend rule. Yes, so uh, this is the latest legend rule we have. We've actually had quite a few other legend rules in the past. Um, from the the set legends to champions of kamigawa um the first legendary with a given name to get onto the battlefield actually won uh, for want of a better word so if you played your oh God, i'm trying gonna try and come up with a legends name uh card now i'm gonna fail miserably um yes you 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 play your legend with name a and your opponent uh then can't they literally can't play it um and or if they do, it goes straight to the graveyard. So uh, yes, from Champions of Kamigawa to Magic 2014, um, playing another legendary with the same name sent everything to the graveyard. So that was a good way, uh, quite a lot of decks, I think at the time, I've, I remember reading some of these things. There, there are other legendaries that you could play that the, some decks were playing literally just to remove all the legendaries of that type uh, from the battlefield. So you'd, you'd play, somebody would play their legendary and you'd just play your copy. It was literally just a removal spell. Um, yeah, Magic 2014, they got rid of that because that was stupid. Um, and now we have the current legend rule, uh, which makes a lot more sense. Can't beats can. Um, yeah, so this is one of the magic golden rules uh, as they're so aptly named. Um, when a rule or effect allows or directs something to happen and another effect states that it can't happen, the can't effect takes precedence. And they've helpfully put a nice example in there as well. Um, so if you've got an effect that says you may play an additional land this turn and another reads you can't play lands this turn, you, uh, you can't play lands. That's just how it is, unfortunately comes up fairly often. Um, yeah, a lot of uh, hate cards in, in white will prevent you from doing something, um, even if you're allowed to by another effect. So the stack, um, I've only got one slide for this. Um, the stack is probably one of the more complicated uh, aspects of magic. The, here are the top two rules, basically, of the entirety of section 405, of the comprehensive rules, which deal with the stack itself. Um, and I'm, yeah, essentially what, what happens is it's a, it's a last in first out system, or if you look at it like a deck of cards, um, it's essentially putting cards on top of a pile and then you'd start taking cards off the pile to resolve them. So if you play a spell and then somebody plays a spell in response to that spell, that card goes on top of the card in the pile. And then when you come to actually work out what's happening, you start taking the cards off the pile one by one. And those cards can be actual spells or abilities or um, anything that uses the stack. Yeah, it's quite a complex um, thing to explain to to new players. I would say it's. I think it's also one of the. I think it's one of the best game mechanics that Magic has going for it. It's certainly, you know, it's certainly one of the most unique ones. Other card games don't tend to have something like this, uh, and I think, I think a lot of card games struggle by not having a, a stack. In computer terms, it's literally a stack. Yeah, yeah, that is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, no, that kind of makes sense. 
<laughs> so to all the people, uh, uh, yeah, to all, to all the people who are computing people, yes, it's literally a stack. Uh, next up, we have every non-land card is a spell. Uh, so not just uh, instants and sorceries. So one of the one of the misconceptions again. This is only layer two, so we're we're still on this sort of like general misconceptions. New players might think that instants and sorceries are spells, and if something is going to counter target spell, it has to counter an instant or sorcery. Um, but no, just as a, a spell is a card on the stack um, that's been cast. So uh, yeah, you can you can counter creature spells, uh, you can counter instants, you can counter sorceries, you can counter planeswalkers. Uh, yeah, gatherer joke rulings. Um, yeah, this is another one uh, I quite like. Uh, I like seeing these. It just means it, it, it gives a bit of humanity to the, to the uh, people in in Wizard of the Coast, <laughs> who sometimes probably don't have a, a little bit of that. Um, but yeah, things like uh, the Queen Marchesa ruling, which uh, just <laughs> every every time uh, she's mentioned, uh, it has long may she reign afterwards. And uh, Void Winner saying, "Yes, your opponent can't even we know." Um, yeah, it's it's nice. It's nice to just have these thrown in every so often, as long as they're not detracting from like the actual rules uh, of of the uh, of the game. Uh, yeah, we say if the rules are well made in the basis of a system, developing on top of it becomes easier. I, I completely agree with that. Like having having a, a solid leaf. Uh, Magic the Gathering is one of the systems where they are they have the most, I think, solidly solidly defined rule set, um, and that really I, like look at hearthstone it's just ugh, does, like how, how are these two cards going to interact and it's just a nightmare i think magic has it it is a lot better it's a lot better defined there are still areas where it's not so well defined and we will come on to those later um but uh, a lot of that is like old rules baggage and occasionally sloppy te templating uh oracle text overriding printed text um yeah so uh th this is essentially just the latest version of the oracle text um that is printed for a card uh is is the correct version uh so natural order was um was printed uh, with a as a sorcery it says it has a sacrifice a green creature sort of mini acti activated ability inside the text bit weird um Obviously, natural order tem as templating has uh, has increased in in uh, in recent years. Um, we have things like as an additional cost and stuff like that. So, yes, oracle text overriding printed text. Uh, yeah, creatures staying blocked if the blocker is removed is a bit of a weird one. I think is what certainly one of the the weirder ones to try and explain. Um, especially, I, I think the 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 way that a lot of people explain it is. Um, Creatures getting into fights, you take a swing, but suddenly the creature isn't there anymore, um, and therefore the damage isn't dealt. Which I think you know is one of those things which kind of makes sense. So yeah, there are ways of making a creature blocked. Um, here's curtain of light, uh, which are, yeah, here we go angle that way. Curtain of light. Um, you can just cause a creature to become blocked uh, if you want and it will just be clusters blocked um you could also just bounce a blocker um and the the, the creature remains blocked in the in the uh, in the event of that yes trample and death touch uh so this is this is the first time we're going to visit trample and death touch on the uh layer um yeah trample and death touch is uh not too bad but certainly to new players it's it's a little bit of a tricky one um you have to only deal lethal damage to a creature um, and one point of death touch damage from a trampler allows the rest of the damage to trample over onto uh, the defending player. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, or, or if there is multiple creatures, it will deal one point of death touch damage per creature. So that should be fine. We'll see how it interacts with other things later. Uh, yes, yeah, set symbols have no effect on gameplay. Uh, and here's, here's our first instance of orange uh, anymore. So. Yeah, before M14, expansion hoses, um, of which there are a few, uh, they didn't look for printed names, but they looked for the card set symbol. Um, so, uh, yeah, the expansion hoses would literally, they, they look for cards that are printed in certain uh, expansions. And uh, Arabian Nights um, had mountains printed in it, um, which, which means that if you played with Arabian Nights mountains, 
uh and you had uh i can't remember which, which uh, i'm trying to remember the name i think city in a bottle uh, is the uh, expansion hose that deals with arabian nights if you had arabian nights um if you had sitting in a bottle out you could destroy uh arabian nights mountains but no other mountains um that that's obviously stupid uh, as a as a concept uh, and so uh back in m14 they changed it so that expansion symbols are no longer a characteristic that gets copied around and it doesn't exist on a uh, on a card uh your all, all magic cards are recognized as game pieces from their card names english card names in particular all right mana value of x spells this is a this is a nice and interesting one as well um you know not 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 super trivial but uh yeah, the mana value of an X spell on the stack includes an X, but everywhere else, X is zero. Uh, so uh, yeah, so if a card in any zone other than the stack has an X in its mana cost, uh, that value of X is treated as zero. So if it's in the graveyard, uh, that X is a zero. Um, if it's uh, if it's on the battlefield, that's a zero. Obviously, if it's a permanent with an X in its uh, in its uh, mana value, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, straightforward uh, so if you want to uh yes if you have something that cares about uh, mana costs and the, the the value of x for example uh then it will only take take effect on the stack 